Bad news, everybody. Do you remember the printer block ball joints that I introduced a little while ago? These were designed to snap and hold and take advantage of the layer lines so that even if there is a difference in the way that a 3D printer produces them, maybe a little more scale on the Z than on the X and the Y, that there would be enough flex in the design to overcome them. And at the time, I thought they were pretty darn good. But I've since discovered that there is a problem with them and that could be a really bad thing because the printer block battle mechas that i'm releasing soon on kickstarter have behind all their pretty little greebles and designs essentially a frame that is nothing but ball joints and if these ball joints can't do their job if they can't hold their poses and look good on your desk if you can't make them do cool things then the whole thing literally falls apart. And so I've been trying to figure out what I can do about this, and I've come up with a couple of different solutions that I think are going to solve the ball joint problem. After I redesigned the ball joint, one of the first things that I did with it was I took one of my earliest mech designs from the first Kickstarter, the light mech, and I rejiggered it so that instead of having solid legs, it had these ball jointed legs. And I tried it out. At the time, it worked perfectly. The ball joints held their position. I could put it in cool action poses and it just looked great. And then I kept this together basically on my desk for, well, for some time after that point. But after a month or two of sitting on my desk, and I promise I wasn't playing with it that much, but after just sitting there, I noticed that when I would pick it up and move it, that the leg joints were slack, that they would not hold their pose, and that it really was just not doing its job anymore as ball joints. Now, when I designed those ball joints, I did make tighter balls, and I have recently added tighter joints to the whole thing that are a millimeter thicker in all directions. In other words, two millimeters thicker out or in, depending on which way you use it. And if you use those tighter ball joints when the joints are new on the first print, they will hold together so tight that they will be difficult to move, almost difficult enough that they'll probably overpower the connectors that you've got them connected to. So they're not very good for anything but just sitting on your shelf and looking at. But even after a while, those joints move from being too tight to move to being just tight enough. And again, why are the joints loosening over time? Well, I expressed this to people on my Discord and my theory at the time was that maybe by moving it around, even just a little bit, that I was causing the layer lines that, keep in mind, the layer lines for the joint go this way and the layer lines for the balls go this way. So they're against each other, but maybe I was smoothing out the print and making it so that there was just less friction between them. I even thought maybe it was a, a case of like bearings that are self-lubricating because after a while of using, they, they kind of break off and create tiny little ball bearings in there that create less friction. That was my initial theory. But again, I really wasn't using the, the parts that I was playing with. They were just sitting on my desk. So I wasn't really breaking stuff off to make that happen. But I had another possible reason presented. The idea that the problem is the material. That PLA, when put under pressure, when being squished by other PLA, deforms and changes over time. Now, I'm not 100% convinced that this is the case either, because despite the fact that these ball joints really only put pressure on the top and bottom, these are loose all the way around. If it was just that they were being deformed in the direction that they're being squished, then you could rotate the connector to a different side and it would be tight again. It was just turning it off a lid, and if you just rotated it over and over again over time, uh, you know, you'd be able to keep it tight. But that didn't seem to be the case. It seemed to me like it was looser all the way around, which to me indicates maybe shrinkage? Yeah, George Costanza could tell us more about that. But now that I had a couple of possible culprits for the problem, I wanted to try to find a solution. And I've come up with a couple of different solutions that range from potentially long-term to 
it'll work for now and I want to share some of those with you. Solution number one, possibly the worst, but the quickest and easiest to do is to use blue tack. This stuff that you use to hang posters on the wall. Now, blue tack is a squishy, stretchy substance. So all you have to do is take your joint apart, get a tiny, tiny little ball of blue tack, just put it right there in the joint and then put the ball in there. This makes your joint certainly tighter and it will hold its position just a little bit better however it's certainly not a permanent solution that and it does make your joint a little bit squishy but if you just need your joint to hold for long enough for you to take a quick picture right now then blue tack is the solution that i employ whenever i'm in that situation and when you're done, it's actually not that difficult to take the blue tack off. If it doesn't come off on the ball, all you need to do is take more blue tack and dab it into the joint until you pick up all the leftover blue tack in there so that it's nice and clean, which is good because you're going to want your joints and especially your ball nice and clean for this next solution that works a lot better. Now, the next solution is to use the tighter ball joints but after it's loosened up. So what you do is you print out tighter versions of the balls and the joints that you're having trouble with. And you can tell which ones are tighter because they've got little nubs on the edges of their design, kind of like braille dots that you can feel and go, ah, this is the slightly tighter design. So when your joints start to get loose, print out the tighter ones and replace them, but don't replace them tighter to tighter Take one of the loose ones and one of the tight ones, put them together, and you essentially double the amount of ball joint and hinges that you have available to you because you'll just take the ones that are matched the other direction and put them in your collection of printer blocks for future projects. The next solution employs one of the secret weapons in a crafter's arsenal. Duct tape. No, uh, not duct tape, gaff tape, if anything, right? Zip ties. Good guess, but I'm talking about nail polish. If you can get clear nail polish, it will work on all of your ball joints. If you can't, black works for most of them, but even so, if you just don't care, use whatever color you want. But I like to keep some black and some clear on hand for these. Just take that nail polish and paint the ball with it. Now, keep in mind, you want it to be a good coating on there, and you're going to want to let this set up overnight at least. Don't put it back in while it's wet, and don't put it back in after an hour. You want it to be good and cured before you put the ball joint and the ball back together. And I found that when I use this solution that it tends to hold and continues to hold for quite a while. I've been using this on Chonky Boy, which was one of them that got slack really fast. And when he gets slack, he can't even stand up straight. But you'll notice now he holds his pose remarkably well with these back swept knees. Now, the last solution is not one that can be applied after the fact like these ones. This one requires a little bit of pre-planning. And it's based on the idea that if the problem is that the PLA shrinks, well, don't use PLA. Use a different material that will hold its shape better. And I've been testing these Pet G printed ball joints for a month now, and so far there's no sign of them letting go of their hold and, and keeping their pose even after a month of sitting there. They're not deforming, they don't seem to be slackening. Pet G, at least for the ball joints, is probably the material to use if you can, if you can plan ahead. Huh. Um, apparently the end of this video got eaten by the corruption, so editing room Joe here to wrap it up today. I hope that this information helps anybody who has been trying to print some of the ball joints, especially those who have maybe joined the Battle Mecha Frame contest, where you can download it on Thangs, print it out and win cool prizes from my friends at Thangs, A-City, and Sliceworks. And if you haven't already heard about this, there's a whole video about it that you can check it out. So do print out some cool battle mechas. And now that you know how to make the joints even better, make them even better so that you can make your battle mecha do cool poses and stuff like that. 
they're so much fun they really are but i want to thank you very much for watching and remind you you are a child of god so you're special to me so take care of yourself and if you can someone else too i'll see you next time